you must be delighted that now that you've you've come to the end that the audiences are going to get to to yeah. see it. You must be delighted to release it into the world if you it's like. It's been a long way. Yeah, it really it? has. Yeah. Yeah, we filmed it ages ago. Yeah. I've been desperate for it to come I know. out. <laughs> I was just talking to Laura uh, uh, about it and she was saying that uh, it was 32 degrees heat and you guys were in yeah, corsets really and stuff. Yeah. That must have been mm. quite tough. And capes and petticoats and... Rory, Everything. who plays Henry VIII, had a full fur cloak. Ooh, yeah. He had—he actually had it the worst because mm. he was playing the king, so he had like the most elaborate costume. Yeah. Not the king, the prince at that point. The prince, yeah. But, you know, he was a big deal, so yeah. they gave him fancy clothes and it was really hot. Um, and the, there was a banquet scene where we all sat down to eat and the cheese by the end was sweating. Melted. Melted. Yeah. Yes. Melted. That's pretty hot. And yeah, the meat hot. was... Oh, it wasn't good. All for art. All for right? art, yeah. Um, so, I mean, for you guys, I mean, how did you get involved? Because this is your first, your first it is, project. So, yeah. how did it come about? Was it just kind of auditions and so, everything else? So, yeah, so I was at drama school at Lambda in my, in my third year and um, this was actually the third ever audition I did. Um, Don't and I, show off. Um, I, <laughs> this was the 432nd audition I ever did. Um, <laughs> the and third one I ever booked. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I actually auditioned for Catherine, like, at first. Oh, nice. And apparently, I have that's no knowledge of this, you. but... Yeah, that's mm -hmm. why I hate you. Sorry, okay. um, I actually have no knowledge of this, but apparently I left the room and the director and the casting director just turned around to each other and went, that's our Rosa. And I had... And then next week, I got brought in for Rosa and then phone call, and a week later, I think, I was on set for yeah. six months. So it was Matthew quite... was the first person that got cast. I was, yeah. I was. Was it one of those things where you got a phone call and you thought, this is, this well, is my mum winding me up or something? Yeah, no, so <laughs> I, I, I was like speaking to my agent, like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, like, oh, what's going on? And then that evening I messaged her being like, ha ha, um, was it real? <laughs> and she was like, oh yeah, and I was like, oh, I thought you were going to say it was some kind of joke or... I, I don't mean. know what Can I you thought. imagine if you had an <laughs> agent that took you on from drama school, told you you booked a job and then was like, ha ha, it was a joke. I don't know, it was Back around class, April. I think go. it was April 1st or something, so it might have been April Fool's, who knows? That would have been, yeah. no disrespect, that would have been him. It would have been really, <laughs> really, really <laughs> but, um, No, it was, it was a whole, I mean, it, I couldn't believe it. I, I mean, you dream of that, like you go to drama school to think that you're going to do that and then it actually happened for me very quickly and it was just to, absolutely amazing and then I spent the next six months of my life Living on set there. with this girl having She's the best time <laughs> yeah I mean it's massive production I mean a lot of this I was saying to the guys next door a lot of the TV shows these days are like movies and that they're so epic <laughs> in scale but also you get time to you get time as actors to spend time with the characters and yeah. kind of delve in a bit more than you would in a, in a movie I mean it yeah. must be kind of liberating to to spend that much time to delve deeper than maybe you would in a, in a two-hour two-hour film yeah it was um it was amazing. <laughs> I really, really love acting a lot. And this was the first time that I got to do acting all day, every day, six months. So I was really the happiest I've ever been. Like, it's a, it's a magical opportunity mm. to get to sit with a character and just to get to act that much. Like, you're so warm. Mm. You, it's like acting's a muscle, and the more you do it, the better you get, and the, like, the better you do it, people you do it with, the better you get. And, and I was just like, yeah, in the acting gym for six yeah. months, and like that was, like yeah, that was that was I that was, was just magical. Yeah. yeah, it was great. Well, I kind of felt like a slight mirroring between my character and me. She's so curious, and she comes to England, and I was so curious, and I went to set, and so it was kind of I felt like I developed with her. I kind of learnt, like she learns so much about England and the ways there. I felt like I was learning as the actor, like the ropes of the world and the set and left a different person than I came, I would say, and yeah. so did Rosa. Yeah. And there's so many kind of narrative streams and themes with this story that are quite prevalent for, for modern day. I mean, how important do you think it is to tell why it now is uh, such an important time to tell this particular story? I think it's a really, really important time to tell women's stories, yeah. to tell stories about women who aren't that likeable, who are confused and who are working stuff out, mm -hmm. like Catherine, Emma said to me really from the beginning, she was like, you know, she can be really privileged and entitled and overbearing, but also kind and working stuff out and passionate and vulnerable. She can be all of those things. And you don't have to make her one or the other. She can teeter and she can wobble and the audience doesn't have to like her. And that's a total gift 
for an actor, but also really, really important for an audience yeah. because that we're, we're not, not telling a story. We're not telling stories about princesses mm. who are perfect or queens who are evil. Or, we're telling stories yeah. of people. Or women that can only have like one character trait. Yeah. They can have everything and be liked and disliked at different yeah. moments. Yeah, I guess the great thing with this as well, I can imagine it, it kind of weaves the flaws as well. Like you get the real mm. the kind of human emotion. I mean, when you read the scripts the first time, did you get a sense that that was, yeah. that it was warts and all in, in oh, some respects? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. The good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're really like, you don't know if Catherine is the heroine or the villain or if she's in the middle of all of it trying to make the best yeah. out of a bad situation. And you don't know if Rosa is stupid or yeah. kind-hearted. Yeah. And you don't know if Lena is like, too strict or, or like pra necessarily practical. proud. Yeah. yeah. Or and we still don't know. Yeah. <laughs> still working these things out. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what humans are. Yeah. Like we're working stuff out, and we don't know the answers, and we don't always make the right decisions. And it's a ping pong through mm. life. Yeah, that's what these girls are doing. Yeah. And you've got, I mean, behind the camera, obviously, you talked to, touched on Emma there as well. I mean, yeah. she's done such amazing things oh, across yeah. the board. It must have been great to work with someone who had done so many amazing things and that you could put your trust in her that she was going to bring the story to, the, to life in, in the right way. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think trust. what Emma did with the White Princess and the White Queen just was the most incredible platform for women to tell their stories. And I was obsessed with those series. Mm. And I'm so glad and grateful that they even exist yeah. so to be part of that is a really for me as a female actress is a really what like what an honor to be a part of that mm. universe it's can we say universe <laughs> if we're in a yeah. superhero movie <laughs> yeah it's, it's the white princess universe, universe. <laughs> marvel spanish princess exactly yeah <laughs> yeah no you I, we, there was so much trust in the stories she was telling and the way she was telling them and you trust her to build your world and your character mm. so appropriately and I think it's really relevant to tell female like stories from the female perspective nowadays but then to do what Emma's done and go back through history and retell the story not just tell a new one yeah. is is quite amazing and we're at a point now I guess with TV that, that it, as I say it is like movies but people can consume them on their own mm. on their own time and kind of delve themselves into this I mean it must be exciting for you as actresses to be part of something that people are going to see around the world yeah. and that they're going to watch however they, they see, see fit. Yeah. Mm. I, I watched exciting. it. I watched it in two back-to-back -back blocks, episode one to four and episode five to eight. And, yeah, it was just, it was really, it was really exciting. Like, we, it's, a, it's got a global fan base and people can watch it. Yeah. This thing that we made in Bristol over our summer yeah. is going to be watched by people all over the world. Yeah. That's, but because they're universal, like, they're the stories... It's not just the story of a, of a Spanish princess. <laughs> it's the story of a, like a girl working stuff out and her friends and her lovers. Well, I mean, it's not really her lovers. Ignore that. Scrap that. She's she very pious. She doesn't have lovers. She has serious regal relationships. But she wants to be the queen. <laughs> the sass. Uh, just finally, I asked the guys next door about this. I mean, for, for audiences, whether young or old, I mean, what are you hoping they kind of take away from this? And is there any lessons that they can maybe, you think they hopefully learn from this? I hope that they, that is a really good question. That's what they said next door. I, I'm so glad. I would, I would really like if there was a younger female audience watching it. Yeah. I would really like them to go away and think, oh, I can... I don't, I don't have to conform to one thing. I can be all three of these women. I can be a bit of Catherine, a bit of Rosa, a bit of Lena, a bit of Laura, as in Margaret Pohl. Um, I'd like to be a bit of Harriet. Yeah, I would like to be a bit of <laughs> in Margaret Beaufort as well. acting ability. Um, yeah, I'd like them to think that their story is just is really important to get told as well. And yeah. there's like a, there's like so many different versions of what being a woman is in this mm. show. And that's really important that we tell those stories for young girls so that they don't just see stories of princesses who are one note. It's, yeah. it's a real array of women who are a lot of different things. And I think for the wider audience, I think it would just be really great if they just took away that they, there is a whole story behind the word divorced in the <laughs> rhyme for Henry's wives, for Catherine. Like, it would just be great if they're like, oh, yes, so that girl... Yeah was a girl who yeah. came over from exactly. and they understand no. more of the fact that these women have literally been reduced to one word in history so yeah. 
Yeah, I would like yeah. people to think that maybe Catherine isn't just the rubbish, boring, dowdy precursor to sexy Anne Boleyn, but actually she's really she's, pretty cool. She's really cool, and yeah. she's sexy herself. So. I think so, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good place to end. Guys, yeah. thank you so much. Absolute oh, pleasure so talking much. to you. It was so thank nice so to meet you. you as well. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys!